Hello my loves, I hope you're doing all kinds of well. 2024 hasn't been my year so far, so I bought a lot of books to make myself feel better because when life gives you lemons, go to the bookshops, am I right? <laughs> so I have over like 50 books to show you guys in this video, so I'm gonna try and keep it swift. I'm gonna try and keep this moving. <laughs> this might be the biggest book haul I've ever done. Don't quote me on that though. I've actually read some of these though, so yay for me. <laughs> the majority I have not, so. Let's crack on, shall we? I have a mix of genres here, as usual, um, but I've tried to put them in piles somewhat <laughs> based on overall vibe, I guess. So I'm gonna start with the fantasy. First up, Till Death Do Is Barred by Rose Black, which cute title cute cover. It's a charming queer fantasy perfect for fans of legends and lattes and nettle and bone. So you know I needed this in my life. The back says marriage isn't always sunshine and unicorns. Sometimes it's monsters and necromancy. Say less. And I have a couple of arcs actually. I know. Look at me. Both coming out in August 2024. Firstly, we have Long Live Evil, which I have read and absolutely adored. I was scared going into it because we do follow a main character who does sadly have cancer and I was like, oh, this might, this might be a bit too much for me because triggered, you know? However, our main character has a second chance at life when she enters the story, her favourite book series, she enters, she gets to be one of the characters in the story. However, in this fantasy world, she discovers she's not the heroine, she is the villain. So it's time to assemble a rogues gallery of villains and hatch an evil plot. The cover alone, the title, the synopsis, if this isn't already on your radar, please put it on your radar. I really, really liked this book. Same with The Phoenix Keeper. This is a different vibe, more wholesome, also queer. It's a queer romantic fantasy. I'm not saying romanticy. That is something different in my brain. It says romanticy. I'm like, I've read it. It's not, it's not romanticy. It's a fantasy with some romance. <laughs> but it's set in a zoo of mythical creatures and we follow a character who is obsessed with phoenixes. She's loved them ever since she was young and it's her job now to try and get them to breed. Like, it's like the pandas at Edinburgh Zoo. It's a really hard task. But there is a plot, a dark plot in this zoo which you'll need to uncover and save the animals. And like I said, it's queer. There's some um, sapphic romance in here. Again, adorable, loved it. For any animal lovers, I feel like you'll eat this up. We then got a sequel. I got Heart Song by TJ Klune. Well, it's kind of like a companion next in the series. The first one is Wolf Song. Again, queer, werewolves, wholesome as heck. The art style of this cover is just everything to me and Wolf Song is one of my favourite books of all time, I think. So of course I needed to get this and continue on in the series. I tell a lie. The second one's Raven Song. This is the third one. <laughs> Still haven't read Raven Song. So adorable, but also Loki the sex scenes in the first book had me like clutching my pearls as not I'm not someone who reads a lot of romanticy, I guess. So I was like, oh, a bit taken aback, but it was lovely. Another one I need to get to is the new Sanderson. It's Sunlit Man. A Cosmere novel. I still have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter to read though, which is definitely on my priority list for this year. And then of course this one, because he's only gone and said that there's another one coming. I need to catch up. From the secret novels or whatever, I really, really enjoyed Tress. Loved Tress. Didn't necessarily love um, Wizard's Guide to Medieval England, whatever it was. That just felt like Brandon was just dunking all his knowledge on us of, um, yeah, he, he clearly really likes Medieval England. As someone who's English, don't get it, but whatever. But excited for this. This next one was a recommendation from my Patreons. Actually, I think it was Sam. Sam, this is your fault. <laughs> and it's A Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. It's a peculiar crime, a brilliant investigator, a mystery of epic proportions. Part Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, part through the looking glass. The Tainted Cup is one of the wildest, most original stories I've ever had the privilege to explore. So it's worthly true. All right, I'm on board. Apparently the main character is giving off Sherlock Holmes vibes. And I do like Robert Jackson Bennett. I have only read City of Stairs by them. I still have Foundry Side on my TBR. I know it's been there for years. But also the cover drew me in because of course it did. It's blooming beautiful. So I got that. And also Sam told me to and I'll do whatever Sam says. <laughs> this next one I bought also off a friend's recommendation and also because it's pretty. It's Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Poronek. A cursed forest, a twisted bargain, a love eternal. So we have romance. <laughs> Once upon a time in a forest of tangled secrets, a wild girl and a broken boy fell in love. And it's described as a dark gothic fairy tale. So, you know, those buzzwords are always going to get me. The edges are pretty. And what I like about this Waterstones version too, 
set we have some prettiness on the naked hardback adorable so i got it again y'all if you've read these let me know your thoughts please what should i prioritize and then an illumicrate one we have voyage of the damned by francis white again pretty i love how the back says we can get murdered tomorrow tonight we party i think this is another like murder mystery vibe yes 12 magical blessings 12 days at sea one chance to stop a killer and save the world end papers are also a vibe i am not always drawn to books set at sea but some of them are all right so we'll see how i get on with this okay I really like trials in books. If there's some kind of competition, some kind of competitive element in the book, I'm all for it. So my pal said, have you read Powerless yet? And I said, no. So I got it. It's <laughs> Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This one has like some competition involved. We have a character with no magical ability, but she's posing as a psychic, which is always fun. And she unsuspectingly saves one of the princes of this land, and then she's thrown into the trials. A brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. But if the trials and the opponents don't kill her, the prince might when he finds out that she's actually got no magical abilities. This seems to be doing the rounds on TikTok. A lot of people seem to like it, so hopefully I will too. Oh, speaking of TikTok, I was intrigued. I wanna know, I wanna know. <laughs> this is a laugh out loud fantasy romance about an assistant to an evil villain and their unlikely love story. I love a grumpy sunshine dynamic, so hopefully I will like this. I know not everybody has enjoyed this, but it just seems like it'll be fun. And sometimes you just want a fun time. So, got that. Now the rest of the stuff <laughs> we have, a lot of murder, murder seems to be a theme. We've got a lot of thrillers, horrors, and some manga. Maybe we'll do manga first. We'll do manga first. I also have a couple of wholesome books here as well. It's not all just doom and gloom. So, manga, manhwa, graphic novels. Here we go. Okay. Let's first talk about the ones that I have already read. I've started Jujutsu Kaisen. I have. I've read volume zero, so like the prequel, and volume one. And I've started the anime. I've only watched the first episode though, but I need to get on it. My pals are all obsessed with this series. I really like it. I see the appeal. I've seen Gojo. I've seen the TikTok edits. I know. I'm on board, okay? You'll probably know what this series is about, but if not, we've got a world where curses deadly curses are on the loose and killing folk. We have a mysterious school of jiu-jitsu sorcerers who are battling these curses that not everyone can see. And then we've got Yuji who goes and consumes a curse. Taking in that demon personality within himself, he needs to consume all the parts to save the world. It's, it's fab. That was probably a bad synopsis, but <laughs> I got a lot of books to get through. Okay, next up. I wanted to try this one for a while. It's Assassination Classroom. And here's Tibbs. <laughs> butthole <laughs> sorry jump scare ever caught yourself screaming i could just kill that teacher but if you are going to kill this teacher how are you going to pull it off what does your pathetic class of misfits have in their arsenal to combat teachers alien technology bizarre powers and tentacles i don't know sounds fun oh this is an ashley made me buy it purchase there's always at least a few in every haul i do and it's rosenblood which is vampire -y. what lurks behind the gazes of mesmerizing men who eat blood red crystals <laughs> after a carriage accident this young girl wakes up in a gothic mansion to find that her saviors are gorgeous young men they let her stay as a maid but stella soon realizes that their allure hides a savage first Will she survive these men? Will she hook up with these men? We all know. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> okay, Yonder of the Dawn. Heard amazing things. Need to try it. We've got a young princess whose father, the king, passes away. So she's now a displaced princess trying to fight off Emony... Emony... Enem... Emony... Emony... Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Enemy forces. Don't know too much about it. Just it's on everyone's, like, favourite list of manga, so... Obviously I needed it. Oh, I read the first volume of this. So it's The Ancient Mage's Bride. And it was really cute and like wholesome. So I got the second volume. A young girl becomes a magician's apprentice. Say less. Art style's beaut as well. And it's about damn time, right? Tokyo Ghoul, volume one, it's happening. Ghouls live among us, the same as normal people in every way, except their craving for human flesh. Shy Ken Kanake is thrilled to go on a date with the beautiful Rise, but it turns out that she's only interested in his body, in eating it. When a morally dubious rescue transforms him into the first half-human, half-ghoul hybrid, Ken must survive ghoul turf wars, learn more about the ghoul society, and master his new powers. Yeah, I also got Hooky. Hooky, this is really, really cute. Look at the art style. Look at the art style. 
It's adorable. <laughs> Two twins, one prophecy, a whole lot of hijinks. When 12 year olds Danny and Dorian missed the bus to magic school, they didn't expect to be declared traitors to their own kind. But thanks to a mishap with a dragon egg, a broken broom, and a high profile prisoner, their faces are on wanted posters throughout the country. This one's based on a webtoon as well, and I just know it's gonna be a fun time. <laughs> okay, now, couple of manuas. Am I saying that right? Am I saying it right? Let me know, folk. <laughs> but solo leveling, volume one, I had to do it. A friend told me. I had to do it. Based on the hit fantasy novel, experience the web comic that's captured the attention of millions in all of its full colour glory. Known as the weakest hunter of all mankind, E-rank hunter Jinwoo, his contribution to raids amounts to trying not to get killed. Unfortunately, between his mother's hospital bills, his sister's tuition, and his own lack of job prospects, he has no choice but to continue to put his life on the line. So when an opportunity arises for a bigger payout, he takes it only to come face to face with a being whose power outranks anything he's ever seen. With the party leader missing an arm and the only healer, a quivering mess, can Jinwoo somehow finally find them a way out. So many people are obsessed with solo leveling. I wanna know why, so I got it. And then this one, I low-key started it and then put it aside, but I need to get back to it. This is Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, Volume 1. And this one's really cool because it's about a guy who is obsessed with this webcomic or online novel that's super obscure. No one seems to be reading it. He's the only one that's like leaving hits on the website, leaving comments. But then one day, that story online comes to an end but then so does the world. <laughs> People all around the globe suddenly find themselves being massacred by horrific monsters or pitted against each other in sadistic scenarios straight out of the novel. However, only Doctor is aware that this is merely the first chapter of what is to come. Knowing the devastating plot twists are on the horizon, he can no longer afford to sit back as a reader. It's time for Doctor to step up and write his own destiny. So he's the only one that knows what's going to happen. He needs to step up and change things. And it's what I read, I really like. Again, I could probably, you know, read all this stuff online, but I like having a physical copy. I like... I'm a collector, what can I say? <laughs> okay, now the rest is a mix of wholesome and then murder, I think. I'll just books with like darker themes. But for the wholesome ones, firstly, I have this one, which is Welcome to the Hyunnam Dong Bookshop, which has been translated from Korean. We have a character whose life basically falls apart. She doesn't know what she's doing, so she decides to follow her dream and open a bookshop. A heartwarming story about finding comfort and acceptance in your life and the healing power of books. I feel like every book that says, you know, helps you to find comfort in your life. And you know, the book is about how books help people I'm like yes say less in the basket slam down the card you know how it be all right this one has a cat on the cover we know everyone's gonna get it it's the Kamagawa food detectives and this is a Japanese bestseller what's the one dish you do anything to taste just one more time down a quiet back street in Kyoto exists a very special restaurant called the Kamagawa diner the father daughter duo who own this restaurant have started advertising their services as food detectives as they are capable of recreating a dish from their customers past that may well hold the key to unlocking forgotten memories and ongoing happiness the restaurant of lost recipes provides a link to the past and a way to a more contented future sounds adorable. I then have the Dalagut Dream department store. The dream you ordered is sold out. <laughs> Another Korean bestseller. In a mysterious town that lies hidden in our collective subconscious, there's a quaint little store where all kinds of dreams are sold. Each store in the department store sells a special kind of dream catered for each client. It sounds so cute. There's never a dull moment thanks to the curious, funny and strange clientele that regularly visit the store. And it says it's a captivating story that will leave a lingering magical feeling in readers' minds. This is the first book in a duology app actually, for anyone exhausted from reality of their daily life. Yep. <laughs> okay, murdery ones. I'll maybe mention a couple that I have read. So The Fury by Alex McLeodes. Didn't love it. <laughs> it was just okay, so much so that I cannot remember the plot of this really. I just remember they're on an island. One of them's plotting a murder. I feel like I got to the end of this and went meh and then moved along. So I have it. I wouldn't recommend it. This one came highly recommended. It's The Quiet Tenant by Clemence uh, Michelot. I know it's translated from French, so I apologize for my pronunciation of that name. But this one's about a man who is imprisoning a woman in his shed. The woman knows he's a murderer, he's killed a few women, and it's quite interesting because it's a lot of it is from her point of view. So she's trying to figure out ways to convince him to keep her around and for her not to be his next victim. When he moves, he takes her with him, which she didn't expect. He also has a kid it gets messy. And it was an interesting read, not one that I think is going to stick out in my brain for a long time, but I think it is worth a go if it sounds like something you'd, be, you'd like. Okay, speaking of serial killers, <laughs> we've got this one. She's not your meek little lamb. It's Black Sheep, a novel by Alexa Harlow and Bryn Weaver. Serial killer, that's not the first thing you'd think when you meet Briar Brooks. She's not just a black sheep, 
she's a wolf and she has her heart set on a very elusive prize. Karen Berger? Uh, trouble is she's not the only one. Dr. Elijah is also on the hunt for the enigmatic leader of the Legia and some kind of cult. And what Elijah doesn't need is a beautiful and brutal student haunting his steps, especially not one who seems so breakable or, or who tempts him to bend every rule until it snaps or who calls to each. Okay, this is rambling a bit. But they're both hunting for this leader of this cult, I think, and I think it ends up in a romance between the two. Um, everyone who has read and loved the Mindfuck series like me that I know of has recommended me this so I'm hoping that I'll eat it up you know and then I've got There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark which I think is a bit of a polarizing one she knows he's no saint but she has no idea she's dancing with the devil so I think she's after this guy who's maybe a serial killer we've got a hot sculptor called Cole who's a predator city of his hunting ground and then we've got Mara who he takes a fancy to he begins stalking her lovely he doesn't know if he should protect her at all costs or destroy her before she ruins him. Mara knows he's dangerous but Cole is the only person who's ever recognised her talent and it leads her heart astray straight into the dark. Cole can teach her to get what she wants but what might this vicious killer want in return? Okay so from the POV of a serial killer I'm assuming I'm hoping the aim of this book is not to make you sympathise with a killer but if he's killing bad folk then you know <laughs> I don't know clearly my morals are great right now <laughs> a couple more that i've read recently and do recommend we have penance by eliza clark i still haven't read boy parts it's on the tbr i know this book takes place like a decade after the death of a 16 year old who was murdered and this crime is now everywhere there's podcasts there's true crime documentaries and we're following a journalist who has um spent years going through the case and putting together a book of interviews, historical research and correspondence with the killers themselves. But how much of the story is true? This was gripping, gripping. Don't wanna to say too much, don't wanna give anything away. Really, really enjoyed this book. Another one I really, really enjoyed was Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. I feel like just this bit enough is enough to gain attention but it says Sally Diamond cannot understand why what she did was so strange she was only doing what her father told her to do to put him out with the rubbish when he died that's what she does her father passes away from an illness she puts him outside with the rubbish the townsfolk find out the media then find out and her whole life is put under a microscope it turns out Sally's had quite the past that she doesn't know about. She knew she was adopted, but she didn't know anything about her birth parents or her past. She doesn't have any memories from when she was like seven years old. So this book explores everything that happened in her past, why she is the way that she is. She doesn't have the best social cues. There is no gray area in Sally's brain. It's black and white. And throughout this book, she's also learning how to interact with people, make friends. There are some wholesome elements to this, but then also there's a lot of dark shit that happened in Sally's life and her family's lives that gets explored within this book and this was really well written it wasn't something that I started reading and I knew oh okay this is where it's gonna go I had no idea which says a lot because I read a lot of books like this <laughs> so I highly recommend this one The Housemaid I read The Housemaid I am now on a bit of a Frieda McFadden binge honestly because her books are just so easy to consume the twists are always pretty good from what I've read so far I've read a few The Housemaid's a good one though I can it's definitely a me type of book if you've read this to the end then you probably know why <laughs> so it's a mystery about why is this room locked in this house what is happening here we have a character who is employed by this family that seem to have like the perfect life of the perfect couple until the wife starts acting really mean to this person who she's employing and shit gets wild i enjoyed it i really enjoyed it enough so that i've now read the teacher which was okay and the Perfect Son, which I really liked. And then also, is the other one Let Me In? Which was just okay. I feel like some I'm vibing with more than others, but they are just so easy to get through. I'm always invested pretty much from the beginning and trying to work out the twist is always fun. So if you haven't tried Freedom McFadden yet and you enjoy thrillers, they're not the most out there original types of stories, but I don't know, there's something about them, man. They're intriguing. Okay, more murdery books. We have Butter by Asako Yuzuki which has also been translated and this is the story of the Konkatsu killer. The real case of the con woman who is known as the Konkatsu killer. She lured these men in with her good cooking. <laughs> I know about this case from listening to like a true crime podcast about this woman so I'm intrigued to see how this writer is taking this story and like expanded on it um, but this bit 
this bit got me. It says, there are two things that I simply cannot tolerate, feminists and margarine. <laughs> also, this cover design is just everything. So I have that. Number one I picked up recently, Everyone on the Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. They wrote everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone, which I quite liked. Didn't love, hoping this one's a bit more gripping than that one was. But how can you find a killer when all the suspects know how to get away with murder? So we've got a bunch of people that are on a train. They're all professional writers. We have forensic science writers, blockbuster writers, legal thriller writers, literary writers, and psychological suspense writers. But when one of them is murdered, which one of them did it? They all become detectives. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. This one I picked upon a whim from a TikTok that I saw. <laughs> it's Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. There was someone in the house, home alone with her young children. A mother tucks her son back into bed in the middle of the night and she hears a noise. But this sound is disturbingly familiar. It's the thread of footsteps, unusually heavy and slow, coming up the stairs. In that split second, she has three choices. Should she hide, should she run, or should she fight? Everyone's saying on the back here, couldn't put it down, terrifying, unputdownable, tense, suspenseful, thought-provoking. Oh, another Illumicrate one, actually. I've got The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I love what they've done with this book. So pretty. Look at the end papers. Such a vibe, man. And underneath, also beautiful. Great job, Illumicrate, on this one. Five women are dead. The killer leaves no fingerprints, no DNA. Police are utterly stumped. In a world where only women can use magic and the men who know about it seek to eradicate them, three damaged young women, one cursed, one hunted, one, one out for revenge, will team up to track down and take out a brutal supernatural killer. Sounds right up my street, right? I've heard great things about this book as well. Okay, ones that are a little bit more weird, I guess. More weird, dark, I don't know. But we've got a Sayaka Murata, because of course we have. It's Life Ceremony. I didn't love Convenience Star Woman, but I loved Earthlings as much as you can love a book that that's, that's as disturbing as that, I guess. This one is, I believe, a collection of stories, not just one full novel. And everyone says this is really weird, so yeah, needed it. Also this one, unsure, but seems like fun. I got this recommendation again from a TikTok and it's Y slash N, as in your name in fan fiction by Esther Yee. This is a novel about a Korean American woman living in Berlin whose obsession with a K-pop idol sends her to Seoul on a journey of literary self-destruction. There are escalating series of mistranslations that land her at the headquarters of the entertainment company that manages the band and her favorite idol. Together with him at last, art and real life approach their final convergence. So it's, I'm guessing it's a never meet your idols kind of book and a look into obsession. I'm assuming, and I think it could be really good. I've recently, as you all probably know, got into K-pop and uh, idols in general, so it could be really interesting. I then picked one, this one up on a whim because the cover looks really cool, and it's The Premonition by Banana Yoshimoto. We're following a character who's forgotten something important about her past. And beneath the facade, um, she starts to recover lost memories and everything she knows about her past threatens to change forever. Unsure but it had good reviews online. It's only short. If you've read this, please let me know your thoughts. I think it could be my kind of book, you know? A couple that friends sent me. So firstly, from Andra. Andra sent me The Echo Wife. Thank you so much, Andra, by Sarah Gailey. I've read on this author before, really vibes. So Andra was like, well, you need to read The Echo Wife. Um, so this one is about a woman whose husband has left her for a younger, better, newer version and is strikingly familiar to her, too familiar to be a coincidence. So weird creepy vibe and then from ellen ellen sent me just one damned thing after another by jodie taylor this is the chronicles of st mary's send these around ellen was like you're gonna love it cody so got me it thank you so much again ellen and andrea love you guys when madeline is recruited by the st mary's institute of historical research she discovers the historians there don't just study the past they revisit it but one wrong move and history will fight back to the death and Max soon discovers it's not just history she's fighting because wherever the historians go, chaos is sure to follow. This is a long series, but it sounds like it's gonna be full of fun, hijinks and humor and I'm all down for that. So thank you so much again, Ellen. One that G made me get. So this is The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich and you know when G recommends me something, you know I'm gonna love it. <laughs> This is an interesting concept. So essentially in this world, you wake up one day and then open the front door and on everyone's front door is a box on their doorstep. And inside that box is the exact number of years that that person has left to live. So it's like an exploration on if, you know, what would you do with that knowledge if you knew exactly how long you had left to live? How would you spend the rest of your life? Really interesting. I'm assuming it's gonna be super thought provoking and probably gonna leave me having an ex existential crisis, but 
Anyway, sounds fab. I have this many left to talk about. Okay. Got What Feast at Night by T. Kingfisher, which is the sequel to, well, it's book two of the Swan Soldier series. What was the first book called? Oh, What Moves the Dead. It was What Moves the Dead. This is the follow-up to it. So we're following the same character. And in this one, there are whispers of an unearthly breath-stealing creature. A dark shadow hangs over this house that he's visiting. Nobody will rest until justice is done. I don't fully want to read the whole synopsis because it's such a tiny book. And I really liked What Moves the Dead. So I have this. Perfect for a readathon. Magical readathons next month. Possibly. I then have Gorgeous Gruesome Faces by Linda Cheng love this cover it says win or die trying if looks can kill then she's truly drop dead gorgeous after a shocking career ending scandal 18 year old sunny spends her days longing for her former pop star life and cyber stalking ex groupmate candy they were inseparable before leaving tragedy and heartbreak in their wake but now candy is chasing stardom in a new k-pop competition and Sunny can't resist joining her. They've got to confront the demons of their past, like what happened that horrible night when their third groupmate jumped to her death. Oh, so there's some otherworldly secrets, some dark truths. And it's described as a spellbinding sapphic thriller, which will have you screaming and swooning for more. So, world of K-pop, but dark dark shit happening in the background, also sapphic. Oh, I read this one too. I really liked this one. So it's The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Beth recommended me this and oh my God, this was fab. I liked Last No Exit, is it called? But I preferred this actually. This one's a bit unhinged in the synopsis, right? So we've got this character who reads this book on Kindle. It was like one of those, you know, cheap buys on um, Amazon. But when she leaves a one star review for it, the author reaches out to her and shit gets wild because the book that she left the one star review for was a horror book and it's almost implying that it wasn't a fictional story. This is an author who was recounting their own crimes and then putting it out there in the world into a novel. And that's all I wanna tell you, but this was really, really good, so gripping absolutely loved it. Oh, I then have another copy of The Invocations because I did the thing where I pre-ordered it and forgot that it was going to be in a Luma crate, so I got that. I then have Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. I did read this and I didn't love it, <laughs> which is sad, but it's about a character whose um, son is kidnapped, taken away years later. She's still struggling with this and then she finds out that her bloody husband is having an affair, so she decides, well, I'm not about to lose my husband too. She gets a bit unhinged. There's, of course, dark secrets in the background. Well, wasn't superly thrilling or shocking and I feel like it kind of <laughs> rambled on for the first half. So it was okay, just not my fave. I do have as well The Reformatory by Tanareve Jew, which is a horror and it's set at the Gracetown School for Boys. This segregated reformatory is a chamber of horrors haunted by the boys that have died there. In order to survive the sadistic school warden and the evils in this fun house, Robert must enlist the help of the school's ghosts only they have their own motivations. So ghosty, creepy, looking forward to it. <laughs> and then have Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. This is described as the Princess Diaries meets Dante's Inferno. Again, another horror. I think this one has a focus on religion as well, dark secrets, small town vibes, I imagine. And the main character's mum is a former horror film star, so. That's always fun. I've heard great things about this. Sorry, I don't mean to rush past these last few, but my camera battery is dying. So in the dream house I have by Carmen Maria Machado. I've read her body in other parts, really enjoyed it. This again is another collection of like short stories or essays, so intrigued, need to get to it. Another one recommended by a friend is Lonely Castle in the Mirror, which is set in Tokyo where seven young people wake up to find their bedroom mirrors shining. Placing their palms on the surface, they are pulled through into a wondrous castle where they encounter not only each other, but also their taskmaster, a bossy young girl in a mask named Wolf Queen. This one. <laughs> Eager to uncover the secrets of the castle, their time here will not be without glitches. They struggle to abide by the rules of the game. And it's a moving story of, of seven characters trapped in a cycle of misunderstanding and loneliness. I don't know, could be cute though. Um, I don't really know what to expect from that, but my friend recommended it, so I want to read it. And then lastly, I have Still Missing by Chevy Stevens, which apparently is messed up. It's, you know, taken, trapped, tortures. It's about a woman who was abducted. Crackling with suspense, this blistering novel tells the story of Annie's abduction, her year in captivity, and the chilling aftermath. Heard it's a very hard book to get through, but, you know, it's gripping, shocking, interesting, thought-provoking, so... That's it. Is that all the book? It's not. I have two more. <laughs> I picked up the new Stuart Turton yesterday, which is The Last Murder at the End of the World. I really enjoyed The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, so I really wanted to try this. So we're on this island. 
there's scientists there, but then one of them is stabbed to death. They learn that the murder has triggered a lowering of the ultra intelligent security system around the island. And there's this murderous fog. Not sure, but it's Stuart Turton. And then lastly, I have The Faculty of Dreams by Sarah Stridsberg, which is translated, I believe. And this is the literary fantasy of a half forgotten life. It's about Valerie Solanus, writer, red radical feminist, and would be assassin of Andy Warhol. So it's about her life. And I've heard that it gets, it gets, a, it's a lot, like I've heard that it's a heavy read. Through imagined conversations and monologues, Sarah reconstructs this most intriguing and enigmatic of women, articulating the thoughts and fears that she struggled to express in life and giving a powerful, heartbreaking voice to the author of the infamous C S C U M manifesto, scum manifesto. The cover intrigued me. I looked it up on Goodreads and yeah, the reviews all seem to be pretty good. So I picked it up. That's all the books. We did it. As always, please let me know your thoughts on these books. If you've read them, if there's anything in this wheelhouse that you think I maybe don't know about and should be picking up, by all means, love a recommendation, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me as always. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so. The links to all socials and whatnot are in the description of this video. I hope you're doing all kinds of well, folks, and I'll catch you in the next one, my dudes. Bye, y'all.